so I guess coming to uh, closer to where we're at now, nineteen nineties, two thousand. Um, your business ventures now. What are you involved in that? Well, of course, uh, uh, while I was at uh, the Park Sausage uh, uh, and uh, operating it, I was on a number of national boards, banks, the, the Equitable Bank, uh, the Maryland National Bank, which is now uh, basically uh, Bank of America. Uh, I was on the Telephone Company Board. Uh, I wound up on Verizon's board. I'm Director Emeritus of uh, Verizon. Uh, the uh, other things I tried, ice cream, built an ice cream factory, went bankrupt. Uh, uh, parks went through mergers. Uh, we uh, formed a joint venture with uh, Sarah Lee. Uh, we sold them 49% of the company, which I later bought back. Uh, we went through uh, mergers, acquisitions, leverage buyouts, almost anything that an American company can go through, uh, the Park Sources Company. But now, in addition to that, I currently operate the um, Forum Caterers. Uh, I'm chairman of the local Baltimore Urban League. Uh, I'm co-joining with uh, Coppin State College to put out the State of Black Baltimore. Uh, I've got uh, maybe 400 citations and a number of honorary doctorates. I was a civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army. Um, I was on the Federal Reserve Bank Board. Um, I, it's, I've got several halls of fame. And, in fact, I got two this month coming up, but uh, uh, I, I've been blessed. I've been blessed, and uh, maybe one day I'll be somebody. <laughs> um, as far as uh, the state of black entrepreneurship in Baltimore, we're just going to, you know, yeah. this is the Baltimore. Um, how do you feel? Baltimore is regressing the black entrepreneurs in Baltimore. I know they receive a lot of help from, you know, Lieutenant Governor Steele is promoting a lot of things to black entrepreneurs. Um, do you think it's moving in a positive direction or is it stagnant? Or well, Baltimore is in a, uh, a good position because state government and city government really favor black entrepreneurship and uh, uh, there's all sorts of laws and other things to help them. However, in proportion to its population, it's behind other major cities uh, because if you think about the fact that maybe 70% uh, black population and 70% of the businesses theoretically should be black owned and operated uh, and to that extent it's not. Uh, we feel that there's a recent study put out by the President's Roundtable and the uh, Greater Baltimore Committee uh, in alliance um, has established the fact that there are 20,000 jobs lost because minority entrepreneurship isn't up to the same level as the rest of them. This leaves us about three uh, billion dollars a year behind that we could have if we had black businesses up to the average. So we're underrepresented in terms of business in Baltimore. Now we have some outstanding people. Uh, one organization uh, is uh, got 30 members and uh, got about $10 billion in sales among the members of President's Front Team, uh, on the one hand. But on the other hand, uh, there needs to be a lot more education and training of the entrepreneurs in the area. Now, because uh, most entrepreneurs, most businesses are business to consumers and you're restricted just to uh, by practices and by racial preferences restricted just to the black arena okay. the black market and as a result uh, it's, it's very poor uh, and the customers are poor Really, the successful businesses are those who go after general market, business to government, or selling business to uh, 
uh, the private sector, the corporate sector. But that leaves the average. We're about 13,000 bis black businesses uh, behind in Baltimore, even though we've got a lot of them. For our size of population, we should have more of them, and they should be more successful. A lot of them start, but six months later, <laughs> they're out of business. 